Mm, oh mm, my mm, god. Mm, mm. What happened? My ankle got really itchy. Wow, that felt really dramatic. Uh, like something bit you. Welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and playing games asynchronously. Exactly, which is something that Jeff and I do very often, as right. in or a day, okay, or a day, like it's your birthday. Every day, day we async in. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So we are here today to talk about different games that you can play asynchronously with your friends, whether that's physical or digital. Exactly, and async, as in you take a turn. Whenever you can, with no restrictions. That's how I play but async. It is common courtesy to try and take one to two turns a day. Correct. Now, some people don't abide by those rules, but we won't name names. It's fun to do bad things. <clears throat> so these are games that you play kind of like as you have time, basically, yeah. and you play them at a distance. So, yeah. you know, Jeff and I wouldn't set up well actually we might honestly we might set up a game yeah. jeff takes a turn and he'd be like it's your turn We've and then i that. take a turn when we could though we could do that we super could do I, that. I would take my turn and then i'd be like it's your turn and you would take a turn a week later correct yeah yes exactly so like jeff said we have some physical games and we have some digital games uh we did have somebody that kind of requested this type of video yeah um so we thought why not let's share let's do it so the first game now i will say that jeff does this more frequently than i do with the physical games there's only i think one that i've played correct in, in this format so jeff's going to be doing most of the talking here yep um so the first one on our list is a game that jeff has been playing asynchronously with our friend doolin from the table knots group mm -hmm. and that is undaunted from osprey games jeffrey let's do it you're gonna see a common a commonality of a lot of these physical games that you can pay, play asynchronously and they're usually driven by a common deck or cards or mm -hmm. revealing cards. There's not any really hidden information that exists in the game. Yeah. So Undaunted can be played asynchronously uh, because you are playing down cards and taking your turn, moving uh, troops on a collective board, um, and then the other person is taking their turn. Uh, the one kind of hiccup that can exist is there is dice rolling and kind of a elimination of cards. Mm. So if I get attacked and roll uh, Doolin's rolling dice, for example, uh, and hits my character for damage, I then will be removing troops from my, my deck. Yeah. But it really hasn't hindered our play at all. Like, Doolin will take his turn. He films it. So most of these, sorry, I should jump in and say, this does require, like, filming your... Yeah, we just film it with your phone. Filming your turn. So we will just have our phones. We will, Doolin puts his on a stand. I'll just kind of hold mine and take my turn. And then I'll send him the video so mm -hmm. he can update his board. Um, and then we go from there. We just take turns back and back and forth until someone wins. It's yep. very smooth. It's very simple uh, as long as you have the space and the technology in order to do it. Yeah, that's a good caveat for all of these physical games. You need a table that you can leave the games yep. set up. Mm -hmm. And you also need to be comfortable filming. You don't have to yeah. film yourself, but you just need to like talk as you do things, yeah. basically. So the next one on our list is the one that I've actually I've actually done this mm -hmm. async, uh, and we do this quite often with our friend Rodney, mm -hmm. and that is we play coin games async. Now they work really well this way because it is an event driven deck. It's a shared event deck. Yeah. Exactly. And basically how it works is one person is going to control the deck. So at the beginning yep. of the game, we will choose somebody who is in charge of the deck, meaning everybody else just has their deck, but it's not in the same order. They will flip a card, let us know what card's been flipped, and then everybody finds that card and puts it out. Mm -hmm. So the one that we have played most frequently is Cuba Libre, which is a game from GMT. It is an asymmetrical game where everybody is playing as a different faction during the Cuban Revolution. The thing that I think is so fun about this in particular in Cuba Libre is that these types of games really... Uh, induce, I don't know if induce is the right word, but they bring out trash talk 
And because of the way that you play it by filming your turn, it also involves a lot of smack talk that goes on a between lot of players. Weasel. It also, you can do a little bit of negotiating, like, hey, like if you don't attack me here, mm -hmm. and that's all done over video. And it's just a really fun way that actually feels like you're playing a game with your friends because you have those videos and it's just, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, there's another quick caveat here that I want to mention. Like, this does require trust. Like, you... It, sure. Yeah. But again, I don't want... Pl I, all the people I'm playing these games with, I trust. Um, and if you're mm -hmm. cheating, then... Who to you? That's just a shitty thing to do in general, so don't <laughs> so do that. Don't but do that. I just want to throw it out because someone will probably comment on it. But like, yeah, like, don't be a dingus, don't cheat, and then you'll have a good time. Yes. Yeah, and so Cuba Libre is definitely one, but we've also done a distant plane. We did try a distant plane, but I'm slow. Jamie was too slow. It was a bad <laughs> to time get, of year to get for through me. that one. But yeah, yeah. I mean, and any any of the uh, coin games that have card event card driven game uh, card player are, are going to work for sure. Speaking of which, Shores of Tripoli mm -hmm. from Fort Circle Games. Yeah, Shores of Tripoli again is a event based card driven war game where each player is going to have there's like a shared deck of cards but each player has their own deck and you're ultimately just trying to get to your win condition you know mm -hmm. the pirates are trying to steal stuff from the americans the americans are trying to invade tripoli and take over the city but like if you take actions and send your video everyone can update their board and then take their turn yeah. And it just goes back and forth until the win conditions met. Yeah. Um, again, commonality, common theme. Of war games. <laughs> war games that have a shared deck or event cards that are are, are played and don't re it doesn't require simultaneous yeah. turn taking. I think that's the biggest thing is that like it needs to be almost like you have your own personal turn mm -hmm. that can affect people because they just can update it on their end but it can't necessarily be something where you know there's a reaction and mm -hmm. then you finish your turn as yeah. an example like root yeah you know root that would be a bit tough would be a bit tough because you could do it like though. you could absolutely do just it but slower. it's like hey you'd have to like be like hey you have to i'm hey, doing this to you but like, see the problem is there's want? yeah there's a simultaneous like you know, exactly. like card reveal and root mm -hmm. and stuff, which would be tough. Yeah. Um, but even in a uh, in full transparency, in Undaunted, like there is a reveal in terms of taking initiative order. Yeah. But what Doolin and I do in that instance is we will snap a photo of the card we're using for initiative. Yes. And he'll be like, hey, man, I have my initiative ready. And, and I'll be like, go. yeah, One, me two, too. Uh, send. Yeah. And again, like we trust each other. We know that we're not cheating. Yeah. So like there's there's little ways you can get over these hiccups I guess that would maybe be like oh that's not really going to work mm -hmm. there's I think there's ways you can get around for sure. That. Now if you're like this is a lot of war. Yeah. Well how about a different kind of war? How about a war of the ring? Yeah. What do you think about that, Jeff? Yeah, so similar similar story. These are also like these games take a while. Yeah. And it's just like, hey, this is like, I'm going to set this up and play with my friends for like a month. Yeah. We're going to take a turn a day or whatever until it's done and you make a whole thing of it. Yeah. But Duel and I have been playing Undaunted for <laughs> Duel and's like me. No, I, I got to take some blame. I've oh. been I've been worse than Duel and recently. Wow. Yeah. Uh, War of the Rings, similar si situation. It's a big war game that has card play. Mm -hmm. um, and... There's really nothing you can do in between turns that are gonna that it's gonna impede playing asynchronously via video. Mm -hmm. During the war phase, you're each are gonna reveal a card, or maybe you don't. Um, but again, comes down to trust. You could be like, hey, like, you know, three, two, one, play your card, and somebody's like, I'm not playing. Mm -hmm. Like, there's ways to get around it. That would be the biggest hiccup is the card play during the war phase. But ultimately, as long as you're trusting the person that you're playing with. I don't think that would be an issue. Similar to the Undaunted uh, initiative reveal, mm -hmm. you could reveal your war cards in a similar fashion. Um, there is some bag pulling in War of the Ring. That would be difficult too. Mm -hmm. But again, you could film yourself pulling your token out of the bag and, and revealing it to the other person. Again, it comes down to trust. But if you're playing people that, if you're playing these sorts of games with people you don't trust, then just don't do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> save yourself the hassle. But Problem again, solved. if you're playing with friends and there's a trust around the table, mm -hmm. then it won't be an issue. Yeah, a lot of these games also are just like, if you're playing them in person, they are games that tend to have a lot of like downtime because mm -hmm. people are thinking and making decisions. And this Absolutely. kind of eliminates that a yeah. little bit because you just get the turn when they're ready. I think, yeah, I think the biggest hurdle to a lot of these is just having the space to set it up and leave it up. Yeah. And, and just being able to leave something in a space that's going to take the room. Like mm -hmm. some people just don't have the ability to leave a big game set up in a space because they use all the space in their house for stuff. Yeah. But that would be, I think, the biggest caveat for a lot of these. I do also want to say, like, there are games you could play by yourself async. House of Hegra is a great example. Something you just leave set up, you take your own turn, and then you come back to it oh, yeah. later. Oh, absolutely. And, use it. and Island Something Shiny is another thing. I don't think Final Girl would work very well Mythwind. with that. Mythwind, for sure. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of games that you feel like, oh, what if I just want to try one by Pick myself? Away. Mr. President? Yeah. You need a lot of But tables. you would need a whole, you basically need a full room for that one. Yes, uh, Battle Battles over Britain. Yeah, there's so it, many, but... so many. Okay. So, yeah, any solo game that kind of you just pick away at. For sure. Now, uh, let's start to bridge the gap between physical and digital. And digital. Let's bridge the gap. This one, Ooh. everything comes together with this one, okay? And they are the sponsor of this video. Have you heard, I, you probably haven't. Have you heard of a little game? I think it's pronounced Choss. No, sorry, Chess talk about asynchronous game talk about an asynchronous game there is a little company out there called chestnut and they make these chess boards that are quite special because they're more than just a chess board that you sit with somebody and play although you can use them that way you can jeff please tell the people what what's going on with chess these days chestnut has developed a chess board that integrates with your favorite chess app. Maybe it's chess.com. Maybe. So what you can do is play with your friends on a board across the world. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you how they do that. If you integrate this chess board, it does require a uh, mobile phone or uh, you could do Bluetooth or you can plug it into a PC, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but basically, if I'm playing with my friend let's six hours him, away. Let's call him Max. Via the chess.com app. This board has lights on it that is going to show me their move in real time. So on the app, I could have the app on my phone upstairs. Yeah. Somewhere else. Doesn't matter. Doesn't need to be around me. As long Doesn't as the Bluetooth can reach. So let's say my friend moves their king to wherever. Well, it's going to show me on the board. It's going to light up green, and I would move their king That's to crazy. where... They had moved it on the board, and then I take my turn. It updates on the app for that person to either see on their digital display if they're playing on the app or if they're playing on a chestnut as well. Because they don't also need to have a physical no. board from chestnut. They can no. just be playing on their play, computer. They can be playing on the app, so it's, it's chestnut board is basically <laughs> like a controller. It uses uh, AI and all of these really cool tech pieces in order to integrate a physical board with the digital application. Mm -hmm. I, in full transparency, have not played a lot of chess in a very long time for that exact reason. I like the physical pieces. And I don't I, know how to play. And Jamie doesn't know how to play. <laughs> but my friend, uh, Dan, does play a lot of chess on the app. Um, and I've been really enjoying playing it again. I've I ripped off like 30 games because I have it set next to me. And yes. I don't require, I can just play against the AI. Yeah. I just set up a game and it'll beep and tell me when they've moved and I can just look at it and be like, all right, I'm going to do this. It'll update the app and then I can come back to it 20 minutes later. It's just, again, a physical way to play chess uh, on, on your PC. And there's also, I haven't done any of these, but there's modules and all of these things to help you get better at chess. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I told you that. No, you didn't. So like you can analyze your gameplay. It will tell you if you've made in... Uh, if you've made bad moves at certain times or like if you've missed opportunities to, to win the game, mm -hmm. uh, if you've made subpar plays, if you've made really good plays, it will tell you all these things. It'll give you all the openings that you're doing. Like you can really start getting into analyzing your chess game if you're interested in getting better. Yes. And that's, uh, I will mention, we do have the Chestnut Air, which is the smaller 
more transportable version of this. Yes. And it still works if you want to play it as a regular chessboard. Yep. And you just move your little thing mobops around and you just say checkmate, checkmate, yep. checkmate, 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 checkmate until you drive Jeff crazy. And then I win. So we will have a link in our description of this video to Chestnut, to specifically just their website in general. If it sounds like something you're interested in, I know a lot of people, and I mean like a lot of people love to play chess and maybe you have like friends or family members that live far away and, and you'd like to play chess with them. And yep. This is a way that you can do that. Okay, so let's talk about now full on digital. Some of our favorite board games have received digital imp implementations. Mm -hmm. Root is the first one that comes to mind that I feel like everybody knows about. Jeff is just playing it yeah. all the time. Yeah. I'm not invited anymore. That's so I wish I would be sometimes, but I'm not because See, I don't know when it's my turn here's unless a quick somebody little tells me. Sidebar. Jamie's playing the victim here. Mm -hmm. Here's how it goes when Jamie joins. Jamie always complains and, and says these things about joining these root games. Oh, I wish I was invited. Mm -hmm. And then we'll invite her. And then it'll be her turn for five days. And I'll be like, hey, Jamie, it's your turn and root. And then she gets mad at me. Don't tell me what to do. Exactly. She'll be like, I know, blah, blah, blah. It's my, I, I'll take my turn when I'm ready. And I'm like, okay. So this is why I just don't invite her because it's a lose-lose situation for me. I like to be invited though. Anyways, Root is an obvious one, which I feel like most people at this point know about. Yeah. So, but if you didn't know, there is an exceptionally good Root app that you can play asynchronously. Your device should tell you when it's your turn. All of these things. Mine doesn't. I don't know why it really doesn't. Really good tutorial too. You can learn Root mm -hmm. by faction. Yep. Uh, it's a really good... It does cost money, but it's a really good introduction into how to play Root, in my yes. opinion. Yes. There, you could play it on Steam, you could play it on Switch, you could play it on your computer, you could play it on your iPad, your iPhone, whatever. Yep. Lots of opportunity. Now, let's talk about some of the newer ones that have been implemented, implemented that you've been playing async recently. So, starting with Dune. Mm -hmm. Imperium. Yeah, Dune Imperium is a really recent release in the last like two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, it is base Dune Imperium, uh, but it is it's flawless. Like uh, normally at launch, there's bugs. There are a few little hiccups, but like the gameplay is super smooth. I've not had anything crash, and it's reinvigorated my love for Dune Imperium. I haven't played Dune Imperium in about. forever, like forever, because you don't have the the group, we don't even own it, which is crazy. That's crazy. Dune Imperium is one of my favorite games. This is skyrocketing it back up my list. It's so fun. There's so much trash talk that happens in our little, like, Discord group about it. I'm in, like, three games with different people right now. You can play against the AI, which is awesome. You don't even need... And, like, the AI difficulties are actually adequate enough that you're feeling like you're being challenged. Mm. So... Yeah, I'm I I I'm a bit of a sucker for UI and UX too, and this app is absolutely beautiful. The development and production of this app is looks it awesome. looks so good. I'm very much been enjoying it. Yeah, the next one is one that I would really like to the play. The next one is an older app. Uh, it's Game of Thrones. I didn't even know it existed until recently. Game of Thrones, the board game, is one of my favorite games of all time. I didn't know it had a digital application, but I will say this one is buggy. buggy, um, buggy, buggy. We had a game recently just crash out. There's also, unfortunately, a timer on this for turns oh, for don't a me. maximum amount of time. And as soon as you time that out, you get booted and replaced by a bot, and it's not a lot of time. Um, so it's kind of one of those apps that I actually think I would recommend playing live just because the asynchronous timer timer on it is not super genuine, oh. gen, generous. Yeah. Um, and what happens is, depending on who you're playing with, like right now I was playing with Sam, who and Sam is on the opposite, Sam from Lord of the Board, go check him out. Uh, if you haven't already, he's on the opposite end of the continent. So what happened was Sam's turn was happening, then mine was right after. So Sam would take a turn late at night, my time, like 1 a.m., and I'd be sleeping. Mm -hmm. And so that timer's ticking down between 1 a.m. to 
9 a.m. and I'm losing eight hours a day. And so I eventually ended up timing out just for that reason. So Game of Thrones, it's super great. The implementation has a bunch of expansions. There's a ton of content. My only... Play this async with somebody in your own time zone. My only thing is that that <laughs> asynchronous timer is very brutal, in my opinion. I wish you could just turn it off, but you can't. So if you are good at taking turns, then it could be a good async game. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, maybe it's... Just want to throw it. It's it's a great... It is a bit buggy. There has been some issues. Max seems to have all of the issues. None of us, the rest of us do. Only Max. Checks out. Max always has issues with apps for some weird reason. I think it's user error, but anyway. Mm -hmm. So two for me. The first one that I want to give a big shout out to is the new Calico app. Where the cats walk on. They walk across the quilt. Now you can solo. play this solo as well and everything, mm -hmm. but if you're not into like the big war games and if you don't want to, you know, have a game that's lasting like war length, like Dune and Root, which can go on for a little while, then try Calico. It's a nice little puzzly game and it's freaking adorable and it's brand new and it's very, very exciting. I love that the cats just curl up on your little... Yeah. They didn't need to add that. There's no gameplay addition to it. But man, just thematically, fun. that's really cool. And then the other one that I love to play is Wingspan. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do play this one. I have played it on over Steam, over like Switch. And obviously it is on BGA as well. However, like the Steam version of it is just... It's got the mute. It's yeah, got the I was going to say, it's, it's more immersive. And it's totally immersive. Yeah. Uh, and it does play fantastic async. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everybody loves Wingspan, I feel like. So yeah. if you haven't played it yet, I would definitely recommend. Just one last one for me is, uh, again, an older application. I've only played, I think it's only on uh, like iOS or uh, in the App Store. And that's Twilight Struggle. Twilight Struggle. Uh, Twilight Struggle. Uh, Another great one that you could play physically, honestly, if you both had a copy. Um, I've played probably five to ten games of Twilight Struggle on the app, and it, it is flawless. It works perfectly. It's well-defined. It's well-refined. There's no bugs to it. Um, it is async, so it's like, hey, I've taken my turn. It'll. There's no... There's no timer on it, so like you can take as long as you want. It works great. If you like Twilight Struggle and don't... Because I know Twilight Struggle is one of those games that a lot of people are like, oh, I never get to play it because I don't have a, someone to play it with and we mm -hmm. don't have enough time to play it. I didn't know the app existed until you know a few months ago, and it's allowed me to play way more Twilight Struggle than uh, I normally would be able to. Here's a question for you. Is Rally the Troops a place people can play async? Yeah, I'll throw that out because a lot of people don't know about that either. Mm -hmm. uh, Rally the Troops is a website that you can play some heavier war games for free. Um, trying to remember uh, what's on there. Wilderness uh, War. Wilderness War is on there. Shores of Tripoli is on there. Uh, Votes for Women is on there. Uh, Pax Pamir, I believe, is on there. There's a few others. A mm -hmm. um, few other uh, war games, GMT games that are on there. Uh, all free. You know, you can add friends, you can play games. I've played a few on there. Uh, the website is a bit outdated. Like, it's not like a refined, nice app, but the games run all smoothly, especially Shorts of Tripoli and uh, Votes for Women, which are the ones I've, I've played primarily. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's another resource to play games for free. Last but not least, of course, how could we not mention Board Game Arena, which you can also go on and play games asynchronously with your friends. Now, here's what I will say. Some games work amazing async, and some games just don't. So I want to recommend just a couple that I feel like play sure. well asynchronously. Um, and by the way, like, BGA is free. You can pay for a premium, but you don't need to. Mm -hmm. And if you're not in our Discord already, I would highly recommend that you join in on our Discord because we have an entire channel dedicated to setting up BGA games. It's almost a community within the community, honestly. It really is, for sure. So some of the games that I really enjoy playing async, Obsession is one of them. It works mm -hmm. really well asynchronously. Boop is mm -hmm. another one that plays great async. Can't Stop is another one that plays great. There's a bunch that I wouldn't recommend playing asynchronously, like uh, Just One, <laughs> as an mm -hmm. example. Uh, there was another one that I played recently that I was like... All the party-esque ones are a bit tough. Similo's tough. tough. Yeah. yeah. 
anything where uh, space base. I don't find that plays great async for me. I'm going to challenge you on that because there's a toggle you can turn on to auto pick everything. <sighs> so it basically Why nobody tell me. It basically will be like you can turn on a toggle that says pick my best option every time. And so he, I just played a game with Mike and someone else and it took no time. I'll show it to you. I wasn't even invited. No, you weren't. Unbelievable. Anyways, another one is like sea salt and paper. Basically, any of those games where you don't have to rely on somebody else doing something. Not a ton of like reaction. Yeah. But BGA is just an amazing resource. And they're adding new games on there quite literally like every, every week. And like yeah. if you're not sure if a game is on there, like it probably is. So, yeah. It's a great resource to try games you're thinking about maybe buying physically. For also, sure. like if it's on BGA, go try it for free and see what happens. Not all the games are going to be free. Some are locked behind that premium membership. But they will eventually become free. Yeah, and you also can get invited to those games by a premium member, which is another reason why maybe you would join the Discord. Because, yes. hey, if you go into our Discord, and let's just say, for example, I don't know. I don't think it is, but let's say Feast for Odin, for example, is stuck behind the premium uh, premium membership. And you're like, oh, man, I really want to try Feast for Odin. Go and to Discord. Invite you. And they will. And be like, hey, like, can someone invite me to a game of Feast for Odin? I really want to try it. You will get invited. Yes. Instantly. For sure. Um, one thing I just want to mention about BGA quickly is I don't play a ton of BGA on my phone. I play a lot on my PC, and it's great. It's great on the PC. There's probably only a handful of games I can think of that really don't function super well on the PC. Mm -hmm. Phone, however, there are serious problems problems with some games mm -hmm. like just the digital implementation of the board to that kind of small screen is really hard uh so just keep that in mind yeah yep for sure so i think that's everything if you are just interested in trying out games asynchronously those are some options for you once again hop into the discord we could chat a little bit more about it because we love chatting about games and stuff. But that is everything that we have for this video. Now, if you're interested in buying board games, like any of the men any of the many that we mentioned today, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is... The Boardroom Game Cafe. Yeah, it is. Do you like snacks? I do. Where people get snacks? Munch pack. Mm -hmm. And if you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. There it is. No, just looking. Don't mind me, just watch. Jamie, we have enough games, man. Why do you always I know, think I know, you I know. need more? Okay. Freezing, man. My nails are wrecked. Oh, I don't like that. I don't. Wait, wait, wait.